Hi, my name is Kennedy Visser, and I'm nine years old, turning 10 this year. I would like to share a little bit of why I'm getting baptized today. When I was little, I learned that if I didn't follow Jesus, I would go to hell. I decided to ask Jesus into my heart and to forgive my sins. I'm thankful that Jesus paid the penalty for all my sins on the cross. He died for me and rose from the grave to prepare a place for me in heaven. I'm very thankful for that. I want to follow in Jesus' example and be baptized to show him I love him and to further my relationship with God and serve him always. I know God has a plan for me, and I'm excited for him to use me for his purpose. My great-grandpa, who is here tonight, attended and raised his family in this church building, and my Grammy, who is also here tonight, grew up and was baptized in this church building also, and I'm getting baptized here tonight. I am thankful for a family who loves and follows the Lord. Thanks, everyone, for coming and supporting me as I honor the Lord. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, so much for coming and supporting us. And we're just so proud of Kennedy, the beautiful girl that you are, and your spirit and your, uh, just your, your love. You're such a beautiful daughter, a beautiful sister. And uh, I'm just going to read a few verses from Proverbs, the uh, verses that we uh, spoke over Kennedy when she was dedicated, when she was a little girl. My daughter, this is Proverbs 3, just the first eight verses. My daughter, do not forget my teachings. But let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and men. And if everybody wants to repeat with me, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Hi, my name is Maya DeBoer. I want to get baptized today because I believe that Jesus came to earth and died for my sins. Acts 2 verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. I'm excited to see how the Holy Spirit works in my life. One way I feel the Holy Spirit in my life now is when scripture is read to me and certain verses really jump out to me. I feel God speaks to me through his word. I also really enjoy worship and singing. One Bible verse I like is 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. I pray that God uses me in these ways. I also want to quote a song called I'm So Blessed. My favorite part of the song says, On my best days, I'm a child of God. On my worst days, I'm a child of God. Every day is a good day, and you're the reason why. I am very excited for what God has for me next. I'm just going to say a little something, too. I'm Melanie, and this is my husband, Ruben, and we are Maya's parents. And we couldn't be more excited to be up here today to celebrate the baptism of our oldest child. If you don't know Maya, let me tell you a little bit about her. Maya was our typical firstborn child who sat happily on her play mat, didn't stray too far unless she was instructed to do so. She listened well, ate her food when she was told, was kind, shared well, and was a joy to be around. Currently, Maya isn't too far off from the same, and she is still a joy to be around. She has grown in her independence, respectfully questions the things of life, is extremely self-aware, and is able to self-regulate better than most adults. 
We often joke and call her Beppa, as she is often more mature in her thoughts and actions than Ruben and I on most days. <coughs> Maya also has a beautiful servant's heart. She is al always searching for ways in which she can help others. She sees needs and then she fills them without being asked or even noticed. She is kind, compassionate, honest, and hardworking. She has a deep desire to know and to do what is right and true. Knowing this about Maya and how God created her to operate, it doesn't surprise me that she wants to be baptized today. She knows what the Bible says is true, and she has rooted herself in that. She believes that he died on the cross and rose, on the grave, rose from the grave from her, for her sins, and she can recognize that her sinful nature requires daily repentance and that we are only made new through Jesus and his abundant grace. Maya has been asking for months to be baptized, maybe even over a year now, and I just kept shrugging it off like Mark just said every time she would ask with the thought that she should be a little bit older and all the wiser, having more life experience, to put together one of those powerful testimonies that Mandy talked about last week, the one that gives a testimony envy. I can remember a time being challenged in my own faith in my young adult years, wondering if my faith was truly real because I didn't have that jaw-dropping testimony, the one that includes drugs and promiscuity or the like. That kind of testimony wasn't mine, and that testimony isn't Maya's today either. But that doesn't make God any less true or any less real. My own expectations that were projected on her as to when it would be appropriate for her to give her life to the Lord were wrong, and we are thrilled to see her baptized today. Maya's testimony is only beginning, and we are so excited that she has decided to accept Jesus' invitation at such a young age. What I want to mention next comes out of gratitude for comes out of gratitude that we have for our family and church family. Over 10 years ago, we stood up here de dedicating Maya to the Lord and asking you guys for help as our family and our church family to come alongside us in doing so. And you did, so thank you. There have been many influential people in Maya's life so far, praying grandparents and aunts and uncles, caring cousins, and of course our Kingsway family that have been taken under her, that have taken her under their wing as ment in mentorship roles. Our beloved Karen Borovage, who is no longer with us, often took our girls out, prayed for her, prayed for them, and poured into them when they were little. She also connected Maya with a Haitian sponsorship program and went the extra mile to make it personal for her by bringing back special items of gratitude from Maya's Haitian friend, Slandy. This showed Maya how real the need is for us to love beyond our home and how we can use our resources to bless others. I am thankful for the countless Monday nights of prayer spent with my small group ladies, covering our family with, covering our family with a multi multitude of prayers. We are thankful for the example that our parents have been and continue to be to our children. We are thankful for the beautiful devotionals, journals, and other gifts that our children receive from their grandparents because we know that these are intentional for their spiritual growth. We are thankful to Mona Awendike, who has recently taken on the role of a musical mentor to Maya, and she has encouraged Maya to use her giftings in singing on the worship team. For this, we are also very grateful. Maya also speaks highly of her weekly kids' ministry teachers, and she learns a lot each week. We are so thankful for all of their commitments each week as well. We are thankful to Mark for always making kids a priority in this church. This will be evident to you all after worship when you see the stampede of kids running to their classrooms and about 75 empty seats available. Kingsway is a place where children feel loved and they are able to grow in their knowledge each week. In saying all of this, if you aren't connected to Kingsway or another church in a personal way yet, get connected. Allow other people that you know and that you trust to feed into your children. Our community means the world to us and to Maya. I'm going to end by reading a few verses, um, what we call life verses, that we assigned to Maya after she was born. Maya's verses come from Romans 12, verse 9 to 18 and they already ring so true for her in her life. They say, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony with one another, and do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay any, anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And so, Maya, consider these verses a prayer for your life. May you continue to walk in step with Jesus as you navigate this world, and may everything you do be done for his glory. 
We love you, and we are so very proud of the step of faith that you've taken today. So Maya is going to be baptized by her parents, uh, which is uh, just a neat symbol of a, a family decision being made as well. So Maya, you believe that Jesus is God, that he hung on a cross and died for your sins, and that you're going to live the rest of your life for him in this life and with him for eternity? Then based on your confession of Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, we're going to baptize you in his name, the name of Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Good morning, everybody. Um, just wanted to share a little bit today about um, what has got me here to be standing here in front of you to be um, taking my public uh, confession of faith. So I grew up in a Christian household and have always considered myself as being a Christian. However, in my later teens, I strayed away from the church. A large part of that reason that that happened was because of the way that the church was that I was attending and the people of the church were. It was uh, very judgmental, gossip-filled, etc. And so I chose a different path in life, and I strayed away. But like the one who wandered away from the flock, the shepherd came looking for me. By God's grace, I was introduced to Kingsway by my good friend Joe Guzar, and right away, I knew that there was something different about this church. From gathering in chicken barns during COVID to where we are today, the people of this church truly do represent and form the body of Christ, and for that you should be proud. I joined a men's group, and what an amazing group of God-loving men we have, all striving to be better, stronger. I would like to say thank you to all the men in our group for their care and support as we've all been on a journey together. Um, if there are any men here today that aren't in a group, uh, join ours, find one that fits, you won't be disappointed. In closing, I would like to share Ephesians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I no longer want to do life on my own, and I give everything to him. I'm excited to see what God has in store for me and my family. Um, just one more verse that I'd like to share, which wasn't originally a part of my um, testimony today, but was part of my devotional reading, and so I want to share with you today. It's Philippians 3.12. Um, not that I've already obtained all this, or I've already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. You know, I was... Still make it. Uh... You know, as Brian uh, was sharing this about being a part of our men's group, um, he, he, uh, I, I've been so challenged by him because, you know, when a pastor joins a men's group, normally they take over. And uh, I, I got to join Ruben's men's group and watch him lead. And as he was, we would chat about things, he's like, yeah, this, the Brian, he's always the one. He's like, this is the next study, man. I found the next, you know, the, this is what we should be looking for. Just this insatiable hunger for the word of the Lord, and it's been a blessing to me uh, as a result to be a part of that group as well. And so it's that mutual growing together and, and being obedient to the Lord. So thank you for that. Why don't you hop in the tub? And if you see, uh, if you see some of these um, uh, names and dates on here, we're going to ask them too afterwards to sign their name and write today's date because like he mentioned, I'm crucified with Christ. This is a symbol of my old life is past. You know, it, it's, it's gone, and as a result, we live new life with Jesus Christ. And so this is the date that, 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 that uh, we recognize that. And so, Brian, do you, uh, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he gave his life for you to pay for your sins? And are you going to live for him for the rest of your life no matter what and enjoy eternity with him forever? 
Yeah, man, then based on your confession of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to baptize you in his name, the name of Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Maybe as you watch this and you hear this, you're like, I wish that was me. It can be you. Just let us know. We'd love to, uh, to celebrate this with you.